but we also get wrapped up in the Christmas of the secular world, Lord. Just, we, I just pray that we can get our hearts in tune with you, Lord. Brother David is going to come in a minute to lead us in the word, to encourage us to stand in all the third ones that need to make decisions on the second you, to change our lives, to the people that have committed to the sick, we just pray that you'll watch over them and bless them, Lord. We just pray for our church, Lord, in this time. We just want to pray for this thing in the name of
Man, the goat. We become a uh, video screen dependent, even as staff members. <laughs> I tell you what, when that thing starts flickering off there in the back, there's something inside that just kind of goes, oh. <laughs> you know, I've got the sermon up here on paper, right? You'd think that that would be a problem, that it, it still gets you. Something's going wrong. We have started... The Gospel of Luke. Last week we talked about John the Baptist, about his family, about the miraculous circumstances around his birth. And we skipped the material on Mary uh, and the whole announcement of uh, that birth and all that was coming. Today we're going to address that together. But let's just for a moment uh, look at uh, what we have back. Okay. What if they really don't want to see me that way? <laughs> Have you thought about that? No. Uh, just what was this material? What was the purpose of this writing? We talked about it last week. Let's just review. Uh, Luke chapter 1 verses 1 through 4. Uh, this is the reason that it was written, and as much as many have undertaken to compile an account of the things accomplished among us, just as they were handed down to us by those who were from the beginning, so they're with Jesus from the beginning of his ministry, these are the people he got his information from, who were eyewitnesses and servants of the word, people who were serving the Lord, recording these things, uh, and we, we talked about the fact that the, the initial sharing of the gospel by word of mouth, uh, maybe some initial writings were referred to as quill or Q uh, as a source, uh, but ultimately the gospel according to Mark uh, was first, and then the others came along with John being last. He said that he did it uh, by uh, trying to investigate everything carefully from the beginning, to write it out in consecutive order, which is certainly not the case for Matthew. <laughs> and, uh, and most excellent Theophilus is the person he's writing to. You say, well, is Theophilus a person? Well, definitely Theophilus could have been a person, uh, but it could be actually you, if you're a lover of God. Because that's what the word Theophilus means. So that you may know what? The exact truth about the things that you're being taught. Luke wants people to understand and to believe and to know these things about Jesus and about His work of grace to save the world, not only the Jews, but also the Gentiles. Remember, Luke didn't walk with Jesus in his ministry. He wasn't saved until much later. He was from Antioch of Syria. He was a physician. And so uh, the Spirit of God is giving him this gospel using all of these resources that he has. But he is presenting it from the aspect of here is a Gentile world and, and this world needs to know that this Jesus loved children. This Jesus cared about women. This Jesus went to people who nobody else wanted to go to. He went to people who were sick. He went to people who had leprosy. He touched people who had leprosy, who had not been touched by anyone probably from the day that it was discovered that they had it. And so he was not a, a distant deity. He was a loving, caring son of God, their Messiah. And yet he was the fulfillment of the promise to Abraham that through him, uh, there would be one who would come that would be able to bring salvation to the world. And so Luke is, is uh, very interesting in that respect. So let's look at the who, what, where, and how. Uh, as those just, oh, it got away. Is it going to behave today? No, it's not. Let's talk about those. An account of things that were accomplished. Those were the things that Luke wanted us to see. 
what was accomplished. Not what happened, but what was accomplished. Have you ever had one of those days that a lot of things happened and nothing was accomplished? And so Luke is saying, no, this is not just what happened. Let, let's tell you what God accomplished as he sent his son. It's from the, those who were eyewitnesses, servants of the word, carefully investigated, presented in consecutive order that they might know the exact truth. As you read Luke, you would understand that. But here's the question. Are you the recipient? Today, are you a lover of God? Are you a person who has put your faith and trust in Jesus? Is this word coming to you as a person who is distant from the things of God? Or are you going to receive it as one who loves them? Well, as we looked at the Gospel of John some couple of years ago, uh, it's dis different now because as we went through that, we were learning things about the eternal Christ who was from before the beginning. But as we look at this stages of the redemptive process, we see that Jesus was existing as God before the creation of the world. That he came in various times in the Old Testament in pre-incarnate visits for various purposes to represent God. And that now he comes not only uh, during the end of the time of the law, but to fulfill the law. That the law, someone might successfully live the law and be perfect and holy in the eyes of God. And be able to be the sacrifice that was going to be worthy and acceptable to pay the sin debt, not only of the Jews, but also in the Gentile world. Now, as we look at this first passage in John chapter 7, you're saying, John, I thought we were talking about Luke. I want you to get some background. As you're reading that, you're going to see that there was some confusion that Luke was trying to resolve about where Jesus was from. Because you look at the passage, uh, however we know where this man is from, but whenever the Christ comes, nobody knows where he's from. Well, is, is that entirely accurate? Well, the fact of the matter is, is that we knew that the Messiah was supposed to come from where? From the Christmas story. When, when Herod wants to know where the Messiah comes from, what does he do? He goes to the religious leaders and says, where does he come from? And the answer is Bethlehem. So they're saying, well, we know where he came from. And they're thinking he's from Nazareth. But is he really? So that's one passage that you look at that shows some confusion. John chapter 9, verse 29. We know that God has spoken to Moses. But as for this man, we do not know where he is from. Right? And so this man who has been uh, healed from blindness... Uh, which he had from birth is going, you know, it's funny that you guys wouldn't know where he was from because if he was not from God, there's no way he'd be able to do this. So the blind man was not blind spiritually for certain. He knew that no matter where Jesus physically had been born, he was from God. And then in John chapter 8, verse 39, some commentators and biblical interpreters look at this passage and they say this, this is potentially an accusation toward Jesus uh, and his, his character uh, that they, they maybe have heard some rumor uh, of this virgin birth thing or something like that. Uh, we don't know that for sure, but you can see in here, it's sort of like, yeah, we're, you know, we're not the kind of people like you are. Um, is something missing from that passage? There is. We're going to have fun today, aren't we? If you look at that passage, it goes on to say that we're not illegitimate. And so you can look in that chapter. They talk about the fact that there's a question of someone's uh, legitimacy of their birth in this particular situation. Well, that brings us to Luke chapter 1, verse 26, which is the point of the message. In the sixth month, the month of Elul, 
Uh, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in Galilee called Nazareth. All right. Jesus is going to have a mother from Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph. Engaged but not married. Uh, more than our engagement, uh, married in the sense of promise to each other, uh, but not having uh, moved in together, the house not completed, all of those kinds of things that would have been a part of the marriage feast that would have happened when they had actually come together. Joseph is a descendant of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming in, Gabriel said to her, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. Now, this tells you a little bit about what kind of a person Mary was. Uh, this is a person who, in the time of the law, uh, not the grace, the, the church age, uh, this angel could come to her and say, You are favored. God is with you. And that tells us a little bit about one of the things we want to think about today. If we want to be used by God, it's often something that we would notice throughout Scripture that a person then is going to be suitable for what God has called them to do. Sometimes he's looking for a warrior. Sometimes he's looking for a person who is going to be obedient, even in the most difficult kinds of circumstances. In this case, he's looking for someone to bring up the little boy. 